Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, we normally have the Wednesday mailbag, but because of special moments like this, we're switching things up. I'm so, so excited to have this guest on the show today. It's such a special day to have him on. In uh, 1995, he became the voice of The Late Show with David Letterman, and uh, I think it marked a change in the show because he was also, uh, in my opinion, an added cast member to uh, an already phenomenal program. We uh, welcome Alan Coulter to The Mike O'Mara Show. Alan, thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. Mike, what a pleasure to be on the air with you. Appreciate it. Uh, we've all heard how Dave's feeling. My question to you, <laughs> how are you feeling? It's got to be an emotional time for all of you over there. It, it is so mixed, Mike. Um, yes, every time we, we do the show, and I look forward to doing it each and every day, even now, uh, there's that love that's pouring out of everybody and the hugs pouring out of everybody, and the, my eyes are as tearful as everybody else's. It's a, it's uh, a sad time. When you joined the show, uh, the first question I would have for you, uh, was it part of the plan going in when you got the gig that you were going to be involved in so many of those fabulous bits? Did you know that? Was it? Uh, no, you know, that was not the plan at all. My <laughs> plan was. Uh, <laughs> I had been a fan of the show for years, and, uh, and Bill Wendell was the announcer at that time, and he announced the show at the beginning. Then he came back, they put a microphone out on stage, and he ended the show. When I came on, I expected it to be the same thing, but I wanted to see the show because I was a fan. And I asked Dave if I could have a, a spot on stage, just even on the side of the stage. I just wanted to see it. And he said, that's what I'm planning on. And the first day I came in totally dressed to the hilt with my <laughs> phone in one pocket, my beeper in the other pocket, and a uh, good watch on. And uh, just before the first commercial, he said, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with our Olympic high diver diving into the Nike pool on 53rd Street. Alan, do you swim? <laughs> Grabbed me by the wrist, took me over to the pool, and uh, before I knew it, I was floating on my back looking up at a camera on the top of the Ed Sullivan Theater saying, so this is what it's going to be like announcing for Dave Letterman. And, you, you know, <laughs> and, uh, I, I, and it just started there. I, I will tell you, uh, I... Uh, knowing we were going to have you on, I was looking at some of the old clips. I had forgotten how many times I replayed the Lynn Cheney bit, which I, I still think. <laughs> I, of all and, and monologues, <laughs> ph- phenomenal guess. That, to me, I, I, I've never laughed harder at a Letterman bit when you did that. Uh, it, it always seemed that through the acting, and you're a fine actor the way you do this yep. stuff, that you were having a blast hey, while, I, while you were doing I this was. stuff because you, you, you committed to it. I'll tell you, the, the, the For the Ladies was the greatest uh, fun that I've had <laughs> on any show. Uh, being able to, to look into a camera when the lights are low and Paul Schaefer's playing the music and saying, I know you've had trouble with your guy, but you give it like the big red, and I'll show you what I really do to you. And those, were, those were fun. And then going home afterwards and getting slapped around the house. <laughs> the, uh, and the Alan Coulter celebrity interview, uh, Rob and I were talking. We've talked yep. first of all, we've been obsessing on uh, the Late Show all, all week for the last week. Uh, the Alan Coulter interview was that born out of the two taping segments on Thursday? Is that how that came about? That that fabulous bit where you would uh, have the failed interview with the celebrity <laughs> that had already been on? How did that come about? I don't I don't know what started that. It was it was Dave's idea, and uh, it was a it was a fun idea the very first time, and it worked out a great deal. There there is a funny story that goes along with it. It's it, I have my whether it be George Clooney or or Paris Hilton or whoever it was sitting next to me after Dave finishes his interview, and I get really upset with Dave, and I start calling him names. I'm going to do this to you, and you're such a guy. You've been sucking up to these people, and you know they're my guests, and I've been planning this for months. How could you do that, ladies and gentlemen? My guest for the evening is Clint Eastwood. And then Dave would say, I, Dave would say, I didn't mean to do that, and I'd say, you didn't mean to do And then tirade on him. Well, the very first time we did it, we rehearsed it, and everybody was laughing on stage. I said, this is great. I love, I'm looking forward to it. We don't tell the guests what I'm going to say. And, and I get a sheet of paper that says, change this word to a blank hole. And change this word to you. And I went, I can't, I can't say that. And, and the writer who gave it to me said, Dave wrote it. 
<laughs> oh wow! <laughs> That's a beautiful story. And, and, and they went on, and you guys did them. For, I mean, a, a good chunk of them identically every time, which to me made it funnier. Well, I watched some of them in sequence last night, and, and it was uh, it was big fun. Rob, I know you wanted to get a question in for Alan. Yeah, absolutely, Alan. Uh, first of all, congratulations on a great run. The thing that I think is so fun about you is that you've taken being an announcer, which is an audio art. And your visuals are so great. Just an example, on Monday night in the monologue, Dave said, well, today's the day we tell Alan. And the one cut to you and just your shrug and your look at the camera like, oh, my God, it's all ending. You did more in one look at the camera than most people could do if they gave a five-minute scene. When they uh, write a joke around you like that, do they prepare you for it? Are you prepared to? No, no. Actually, actually, with that, let me just pick on that one. The camera came around and was three feet away from me, <laughs> facing. And I, I knew, I, I knew Dave was doing his monologue, so I had no <laughs> idea. And I pulled uh, Frank, Frank Camito, who's, who was one of our stage managers, over to me by the sleeve, and I said, "Why is the camera in my face?" And he said, "You'll find out in a minute." And then Dave gave me the line and you react to the line. Most of the time, they don't tell me something like that's going to happen. I think the reactions are better that way and I can react any way I want. Most uh, of the skits that we do, they don't tell me it's going to happen. They're going to happen like that until probably an hour and a half before the show. And I yeah, get a call. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that's, that's the amazing. beauty of, that's the beauty and the fun that I have in that it's just, it's just tremendous. Every day is like being in a playground when you're three years old and being told you can play in the mud and do whatever you want and mommy's not going to punish you later. Huh. Just, we just got you, uh, we've got you for just a few more minutes and I want to make sure I get my questions in here. I want to say, will we yeah, see, in your, in your opinion, will we see Dave on TV again? A lot of people have said they don't think so. Uh, do you think we'll see Dave on I, TV I, You again? know, honestly, I don't know. I'm hoping for reunions. I'm hoping for as much work with Dave and, and as much fun, more fun with Dave that than we've had so far, but I know he's well and he's happy and he's going to miss this, even though his life from now on is going to be a pleasure. And I'm hoping he wants to get back once in a while and I'm a part of it. Do you think he knows uh, after all this, how big a deal some of us think this is and how emotional we will all be when the curtain comes down? Do you think he's aware of that? I think he's aware of it from the, uh, from his guests. I think I know he's aware of it from us. And most importantly of all, I know he's aware of it from our audiences. We have 461 people in that audience every day. They are giving him so much love day after day, as they always have, but even more now. Uh, do you know uh, what your plans are? People should know, Alan. You're you're 24 years old, or too <laughs> too young to st to start a you know yep. to to stop a career. Uh, are you going to be yep. retiring as well, or are you going to be moving on to uh, to other things? Well, I'm going to leave this show, and everything else is going to be a surprise to me. There are offers, but everything's going to be a surprise. I would like to be I would like to be just a, a frequent guest on the Mike Amira show. <laughs> <laughs> that could happen. Big that win. would make uh, my life complete. Uh, uh, kids, uh, if you're taking notes, notes on how to be an interview uh, ladies and gentlemen this is a pro we're talking to here always schmooze the interviewer no matter how small that's a, a beautiful the best. thing the uh, best. and do you have you and, and I, you don't have to share this if you don't but i'm but i just wondered about it do you know what you're going to say to the big guy at the very end when you do say goodbye have you thought about it you don't have to share it but have you thought about what you're going to say to him I know I know the two things that i feel one's gratitude so it's going to be a thank you the other's i love you because i do uh, and I'm I'm blessed with what he gave me for these last 20 years and the 13 years before that that I was a big fan. And I hope to be a fan of his um, for a long time to come, even though he's off the air. You get to uh, introduce the show, and then you watch the show. Do you have a favorite show or a favorite guest? I don't, only because there are thousands of them, and I know we all feel the same way. I think you could have asked me that question in 1995 or six. And I would have had some favorite guests, but now they're just one on top of the other. And it's not a blend. I can if you, you bring up a name, and I can tell you that I loved or liked or whatever that person, but so many favorites. I, 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 I miss Robin Williams. I miss, mm, yeah. I miss having him on the air and the, the funny man that he was. But I'm talking with uh, Alan Coulter, the voice of The Late Show, uh, going off the air this week. An emotional time for everybody. Oscar, I know you yeah. wanted to get one in before we Just let Alan go. Quick question. Um, I know when when sets change or when movies are wrapping up, uh, people will usually try to squirrel away something from the set. Souvenir. So, a souvenir for themselves. <laughs> Is there anything question. you have your eye on? Dave has two Lamborghinis. <laughs> <laughs> I've put 
put in my nibs. <laughs> we, we will see what we will see. Well, you know, I, on behalf of uh, everybody on our show, Alan, and uh, so many people out there, you're a part of it. You're a part of what I think is uh, is, is television history and really uh, so generous at this particular time to join us on the show. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you from all of us and all of the viewers that listened to me uh, for, for what you guys did. Tremendous, uh, tremendous time for all of us, and uh, it will always be appreciated. Uh, good luck Thank in your you, future Mike. endeavors. Thanks so much. That's all Alan Calter. All the best to you. Thank you very much. Yay, thank you, Alan. Alan Calter, thank you, everybody. Alan. Thank you, thank you. That is good stuff. Thank you, guys. You take care. Ciao, Bye-bye, ciao. Alan. For all of us Letterman fans, that was a moment. Thank you, Alan Calter. Let the show begin. 